Look what we have here. Gordon Ramsay and Guy Fieri have been dropping surprise visits on each other lately. This year in February, before Super Bowl 58 kicked off, Guy Fieri threw the mother of all tailgate parties. And guess who decided to crash the bash? None other than Gordon Ramsay. The two culinary titans rocked up, dressed to the nines in black, and shared a warm embrace. And just when he thought things couldn't get any more insane, Ramsay went ahead and punted a football out into the crowd. For good measure. Now, we all know how close to Ramsey's heart football is, association and American alike. But wait, setting aside all the football stuff, aren't Ramsey and Fieri arch nemeses? Or are they friends now? Well, only one way to find out. You might know that Fieri is quite the mogul, with a whopping 17 restaurant brands under his belt and even his own wine label, Hunt and Ride. Fun fact, that label's named after his sons, Hunter and Ryder. Now, this guy's a powerhouse in both the restaurant and entertainment worlds. Between hosting iconic shows like Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, which put him on the map in the first place, guys' grocery games, and juggling his slew of restaurants and side hustles all at the same time, he's definitely a busy guy. And by the way, he's also an Emmy Award winner with a culinary empire stretching across California and beyond. Not only does he own three restaurants in the Golden State, but he's also got his name and that infamous Flavortown catchphrase plastered on eateries all across the country. It's no wonder his name carries so much weight in the food world. Oh, and did I mention he even stepped into the world of game shows, hosting Minute to Win It for two seasons? Guy's not only raking in the dough from his TV gigs, he's also got some serious cash coming in from a mega three-year, $80 million deal he put to paper with the Food Network back in 2021. When he's not on screen, he's churning out cookbooks like nobody's business. Now, sure, he might not have snagged a Michelin star yet, but he's got other accomplishments. Now, coming to Gordon Ramsay, well, his name may as well be a brand by this point. Known far and wide as the bad boy of British cuisine, thanks in no small part to the way he absolutely blows up at the slightest provocation. But hey, that temper's definitely paid off, considering his empire's now valued at a jaw-dropping $220 million. And with his restaurants eyeing up opportunities in Asia, it's not hard to imagine him hitting billionaire status before long. I mean, the guy's practically a Michelin star magnet, with several prestigious awards to his name across his restaurants. Plus, he's got as much TV presence, if not more, than Guy with a string of successful shows, books, and appearances at major events around the globe. Anyway, I bet you're asking, what's with all the preamble? And while 99% of you watching this video probably know these two inside and out, here's the thing. Fans are always curious about what these celebrity chefs really think of each other when they're not busy raking in millions of dollars. Ramsay, well, he's never been one to shy away from stirring the pot. But Guy, despite being a whole other flavor of bombastic, is a pretty private person most of the time. Even though they don't outright declare their feelings about each other in interviews, you can bet all the scandals they've run into might give us a sneak peek into what's really going on under the hood. Well, aside from the fun they had at the Super Bowl. So in 2019, a Twitter user wrote, I really wish Guy Fieri talked to people the same way Gordon Ramsay does. Surprisingly, Ramsay responded to the tweet, writing, I don't think Flavortown allows it. As most of you know, Flavortown Kitchen is a delivery-only restaurant featuring the best of Guy Fieri. Now imagine Guy saying things like, Yankee Danky Doodle shite, if you get the reference. Get in the comments. No, but seriously, imagine Guy saying something like this. That's right. With a capital B. Yes. That's right, with a capital fing B. Or how about this one? Beanie head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're gonna kill someone. Okay, wait. Seriously try to picture Guy in place of Ramsey here. Now imagine him saying this. What we're about to eat, may the Lord make us truly not vomit. Or even something as wild as this. It's good. The pumpkin. I don't see any pumpkin. Seems to be a problem here. Yeah, I just can't see it. Ramsey is 100% unmatched in this department. 
Now, because we don't hear them talking about each other all the time, when a little nugget of information does slip out, you better believe it's gonna make waves. Case in point, the tweet I just talked about. Fans went nuts, flooding the comment section with all sorts of reactions. Some folks thought it was just harmless banter, a bit of playful ribbing. But then you had others cooking up theories left and right. Like, maybe Ramsey was low-key throwing shade at Fieri and his crew, suggesting they're a bit too soft. Turns out, Ramsey stands said that he owned Guy with this one. But on the internet, for every opinion, there's an equal opposite opinion. Like this guy, for example, wrote, I wish you'd talk to people like Guy Fieri does. He's so calm when he is in Flavortown. You, on the other hand, make people not want to learn how to cook better. Another said, correct, Flavortown isn't disrespectful of human beings. And it kept going. Gordon Ramsay is just rude. You go back at him and he folds like a pack of cards. He insults people who he wants to look at himself. He's known only for swearing. That is it. Say what you will, but he doesn't fold in face of confrontations. Hey, wanna talk some Let's go step outside, mother I mean, come on, I shouldn't need to remind you about this. Anyway, these two chefs have their own unique ways with words, and it's kinda unfair to compare them. Fieri, well, instead of just saying he enjoys something, he'll hit you with lines like, it's got whiz bang wow in there. Or maybe, perhaps something like this. The slave jets are turned on. You can hear the wee, wee, wee. Put that on a flip flop. Meanwhile, Ramsey's got his own colorful language, and as I'm sure we all know, it involves a lot of F-bombs. If he likes your food, the most he'll say is, that's delicious. Or if you're lucky, you might be on the receiving end of this. Tofu, I've never been a big fan of. Moving on, I'm sure you remember this pair of clowns. I've been doing this. Disrupting. You did disrupt us. For some context, both Amy and her husband Sammy could not take a speck of criticism. Ramsey got so pissed by their defensive attitude that he abandoned their restaurant entirely. They were seen stealing tips and claiming they cooked what they were selling secondhand. Awful things. Like what? The way you treat stuff. Some independent reviewers who saw the episode and decided to check it out had about as awful an experience as Ramsey did. But anyone who gave them any sort of feedback was declared public enemy number one in their book. Why am I mentioning them here? Keep watching, I'll tie everything up by the end. Anyway, these nut jobs had a crazy meltdown on their Facebook page, accusing everyone on Reddit, Yelp, YouTube, you, me, your grandfather, sisters, roommates, dogs, boyfriends, well, pretty much everyone who hated their food and guts, of being trash or co-conspirators in some grand scheme and bringing her business down. Although these Facebook posts have since been deleted from their page, the internet is forever. Pause and read for some laughter, or to lose your faith in humanity wholesale. I'll let you be the judge. Speaking on this, back in 2013, during a chat on the Today Morning Show, Guy Fieri didn't hold back his thoughts. Fieri straight up said he was in awe of the whole circus. I've heard about this. It's tough, you know. I'm a chef first and a restaurant owner way before I was ever on Food Network, and it's a tough business. Fieri went on to point out that his show is a whole different ball game compared to Ramsey's. He made it clear that diners, drive-ins, and dives is all about serving up positive Positivity first and foremost, putting folks on the map, not tearing them down. To quote him directly, Gordon's show is a lot different than diners, drive-ins, and dives. I go to places and say, check out this dish, it's great. So this whole dynamic that's taking place and how it's escalated, I'm actually in awe. Hmm, sounds like he's drawing a pretty clear line between his vibe and Ramsey's. And let's be real, that says a lot about where he stands on the whole controversy, right? By the way, Guy has had his fair share of kitchen nightmares. I mean in real life, not the show. But just take a look at that brutal zero-star review of his restaurant, Guy's American Kitchen and Bar, from the New York freaking times. Pete Wells absolutely destroyed him in as 
erudite a fashion as possible. Why is one of the few things on your menu that can be eaten without fear or regret a lunch-only sandwich of chopped soy glazed pork with coleslaw and cucumbers, called a roasted pork banh mi, when it resembles that item about as much as you resemble Emily Dickinson? Ouch! We're reaching fourth degree burn territory here, but he's nowhere near done. Towards the end, he asked, When you cruise around the country for your show Diners, Drive Ins, and Dives, rasping out slangy odes to the unfancy places where Americans like to get down and greasy, do you really mean it? Or is it all an act? Is that why the kind of cooking you celebrate on television is treated with so little respect at Guy's American Kitchen and Bar? Well spared no expense in absolutely destroying Guy's career. And well, like most chefs cornered on Hell's Kitchen or Kitchen Nightmares, he was defensive. On the Today Show back in November, he straight up called the review ridiculous and threw some serious shade at the critic, accusing him of having some some kind of hidden agenda. But how did Ramsey take it, if at all? Well, surprisingly, he actually commented. It's not the only time he came under fire, though. Guy Fieri's got this s'mores indoors frozen pizza up for grabs at Sam's Club, right? But it wasn't your average, ordinary s'mores pizza, if something like that even exists. Nope, it's got a spicy twist with some chili powder and cayenne pepper thrown into the mix. Now, while Guy claims they're in there, they're nowhere to be found on the packaging. And because it's Sam's Club, you know they're selling it by the pair. But guess what? Sam's Club members aren't exactly going out in droves to buy the stuff. They've taken their gripes straight to the pizza's product page on the Sam's Club website and review bombed it into oblivion. There is not a single positive thing anyone said about it. Words like horrible and nasty have been thrown around liberally, with people commenting it was the worst thing they have ever bought and even demanded refunds. One person called it a bad joke. You remember those ads in the back of comic books for pepper-flavored gum you could give out as a practical joke? I think this is Guy Fieri's version of that. The stuff is really, really, really wish I could rate it less than one star. Harrowing horrible for his brand. How could Guy Fieri lead fans down this rocky road with his s'mores pizza stun? But back in 2012, this disaster already caught the attention of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration of all things. After someone complained it burned the hell out of their mouth. As for whether the FDA's done anything about it, or if Fieri had intended this fiery twist in mind all along, well, I don't know. Let me know if you know anything about it, because you won't catch me dead in a Sam's Club. Anyway, Ramsey's gotten his fair share of criticism, too. And boy, where to begin. It's frozen. Okay, so it's not fresh. That's what I'm trying to say. What does right. he mean it's bad? So As if I could start anywhere but my favorite dead horse to be. For those of you not in the know, Gordon Ramsay jumped into the frozen food game with the Buy Chef Ramsay collection relatively recently. You'll find these exclusive dishes only at Walmart, and they're supposedly his favorite dishes like lasagna and shepherd's pie. And fans were obviously not impressed, pointing out how Ramsay's always dissing frozen stuff on his shows and preaching about high standards. Respect lowered, one Twitter user grumbled. Complete sellout, echoed another. Yeah, I mean, the hypocrisy is kinda hard to swallow here. In the freezer, I keep it fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. Quite similarly, Fieri's also launched a line of frozen meals, also exclusively available at Walmart. These meals feature some of his favorites, like sweet and sour pork, cheesy lasagna with pepperoni, sloppy joe mac and cheese, and a cheesy chicken enchilada bowl and it actually melted, unlike when I did Gordon Ramsay's mac and cheese and I thought something was wrong with me. Interesting, but he had more to share. I get this again? No, it's not dog crap. Comparing the lasagnas, he said, I hate to say it, but the Gordon Ramsay one attempts to taste like lasagna. Yeah, so both of these industry giants aren't faring well with their frozen food ventures. And it's not just this one crazy YouTuber saying it. Google it. Almost every single person who has tried these have been utterly disappointed. 
moving on, now let's look at the battle of their burger. So they're obviously both burger fanatics, but they take totally different approaches to making them. Fieri's burger? The cheese, right on top of it. Well, it's a bit wild, stuffed to the brim with bacon, chorizo, red onions, and Swiss cheese. On the flip side, Ramsey's burger might seem a tad tame at first glance. He's all about the classics, grilling up a patty with cheddar, slapping it between a toasted bun with a dollop of mayo, lettuce, tomato, and grilled onion. But here's the kicker. The recipe is a whole freaking production. We're talking 19 ingredients and a whole lot of prep time. You've got to cook up that chorizo and bacon, whip up your own ketchup, then stuff, sear, and bake those burgers to perfection. Ramsey's got a bit of a fancy twist when it comes to his beef preference. I have one of the busiest households anywhere in America. Just in tossing in some ground brisket and an egg to bind it all together. But hey, not everyone's got a personal butcher they can ring up at 3 a.m. to make it happen. And, uh, seasoning the burger the night before. I mean, I'll dry brine a steak any day, but a burger? Nah, count me out. It's called fast food for a reason. But you know what's his secret weapon? Basting those patties with butter, just like a steak. Oh, and here's a pro tip straight from the man himself. Season everything like there's no tomorrow. I'm talking seasoning the burger before and after cooking. Seasoning those tomatoes you're piling on top. Heck, even seasoning the buns. So, what did the audience have to say? The better chef when it comes to burgers is a hands-down decision. Call me confused, but I think I like both. Ramsey's burger is what I'll cook if I'm trying to impress my partner or my family. Minus the dry brine, kind of makes it taste like sausage. But Fieri's burger is what I'll have with my friends on a wild night out or when I want some comfort food for a Sunday with the game on. And the internet is just as divided as I am. Some think Guy Fieri is a better chef than Gordon Ramsay, while many others disagree. For people who've been to either of their restaurants, feel free to let me know your thoughts. I know fans think these two titans must be rivals, but no. I mean, just look at these pictures and tell me that they're rivals. Although it was about the Chiefs that day, people loved seeing the chefs together. Look at the comments. The mayor of Flavortown and the Duke of Hell's Kitchen. Another dude was really mad that they didn't get any screen time. He said, they show Taylor Swift and her group multiple times, but not this legend? <laughs> true. And it's not just me, but people really want more of this bromance. Like, it would be great to see you and Guy go on a road trip together. That would be hysterical. I mean, I'd watch that show. An unholy combination of Triple D and Kitchen Nightmares? Sign me the hell up. Another person said, I really need the background story on your friendship with Guy Fieri. It's so unexpected in a good way. Now, this is cool and all, but you know who I'd like to see Ramsey take on? His longtime frenemy, Bobby Flay. In fact, they apparently bumped into each other a day before the Super Bowl. Small world, right? They were supposed to have a cook-off way back in 2013, which allegedly Ramsey chickened out of. I mean, their rivalry is very well documented. If you didn't know about it, let me know if you want me to go over it in an upcoming video. Or you could blow up my social media pages if you're really passionate about the Flavy Ramsey saga. Or if you want me to get into more Guy Fieri stuff. I love the guy, but I know you all are more interested in Ramsey. Feel free to prove me wrong, though. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications while you're at it. And if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see the next one right here. It's even crazier.